Great. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome. We're going to start right on time uh, because we actually have quite a bit of stuff to get through. So welcome to the second virtual Zen Summit. Um, we're going to, in this talk, we're going to um, briefly give kind of welcome and an overview of how the virtual summit is going to work. And then I'm going to do kind of virtual, uh, sort of the weather report for the Zen uh, system. Uh, if you can't hear me, let me know. Otherwise, I will carry on. Make this work. All right. Okay. So first of all, thank you very much to our sponsors. These are all uh, platinum sponsors. So we have Citrix and Arm. Uh, Vates has been a platinum sponsor this year. And we have um, a new entrant, um, Exotania. Um, so uh, it looks like they're also uh, trying to hire some uh, Zen engineers. So look out for, for that. And uh, looking forward to see what they have to say in their in their keynote later this week. Um, so, just to give you a brief intro to the virtual Zen Summit, uh, we'll give you a tour of the rooms. We'll talk a bit about how the talks are supposed to work, particularly for presenting. Um, we'll go over some of the design sessions, and then we'll talk about some of the opportunities for socialization. So, uh, so basically, we have a number of virtual rooms that all have a different um, name. The theme of the the theme of the um, of the things of, of the rooms is cities where previous um, physical events have Zen events have been held. Uh, so uh, several years ago, we had um, a Zen summit in Budapest. So that's where the keynotes are going to be held. We've had Zen summits in Chicago, Nanjing and Toronto. So that's where the breakout talks are going to be held. Um, we've had uh, Zen hackathons in Shanghai, London, Dublin, and Munich. Um, and so that is where the uh, design sessions are going to be held. And as many of you know, the design sessions basically came out of, were developed as part of the Zen hackathons when they were a separate, uh, separate event. Um, the hallway track is called Fairfax. Um, the open meeting rooms are Rudmend and Santa Clara. And those are all places where um, OpenXT is held uh, platform security summits and, and things like that. Um, and in general, you should, so last year we had a kind of a page that had links to all the rooms. Um, apparently they didn't get much use, so this year they didn't make one. Um, there should be links, of course, from the schedule to different events. Um, or if you want to, you can just use the, the all follow the, the URL pattern, you know, link to the bottom there. Um, know that it's lowercase, so if you type capital T Toronto, it won't go there, but like lowercase Toronto should. Um, and if there's any questions about what's going on, um, please feel free to just interrupt me as we're, I mean, either, uh, you know, just type it in the chat or turn on your camera and, and, and ask a question. Uh, so, so for the talks, the, um, the video should normally be off. Um, if, if you're the audience, obviously the speaker should ideally have their, their, um, their video on. Um, to give feedback to the speaker, so if you, on the left-hand side of the screen, if you go over your, um, uh, if you click on your own username, it should have an, a little menu that pops up that says um, set status. And using that, you can set a number of different statuses. You can just raise your hand. You can say that you're happy. Um, you can say that you are confused. And so you can see that my, I just turned my thing, little thing to happy. Um, so the, uh, the presenter can kind of see that and see what's you know, kind of going on. Um, obviously comments in the chat are also a fairly low key way to just kind of, you know, say welcome feedback and stuff like that. Um, obviously, you know, giving feedback to making sure that people that they've done a good job, make sure at the end of the talk that like, unless it's a terrible talk, you know, such a your status, a thumbs up or a smiley face or say, you know, thanks, good talk or whatever in the chat, just so the, um, the speaker you knows they did a good job. Um, now the hand raise function is unfortunately not very visible, um, particularly if, you know, the people you scroll off the screen. Um, and so basically my suggestion is that if you, um, if you have a question, well, you can ask it in the chat, of course, um, if you want to, you know, uh, you can, uh, but I think which an another option to do, which would be to turn on your camera and wait for the, um, speaker to call on you. Does that make sense? So like if, if someone's giving you a talk and you turn on your camera, then the speaker can sort of like finish what they're saying and then call on you and, and, and ask you a question. You can ask your question. Um, yes. And as, as always, um, if you're the speaker, you have control of the room. So ideally, like just remind people when you start the talk, whether you want people to, you know, ask questions as you're going along, feel free to interrupt you, or whether you prefer them to save the questions until the end. 
And if you are the speaker, if someone, and you haven't said that or made a request, don't feel bad about if someone raises their hand or asks a question in the chat, um, don't feel bad about asking them to, to say their questions at the end. Um, right, so design sessions. Uh, so please, if you haven't already, go to the design sessions.presentproject.org and create an account. Um, from now on, um, you will only be able to create an account with the validation code, and that validation code is virtual kind of 2021. Um, I saw at least one person had a problem with the validation code. Is, is, is other people been able to, to use that properly? If you have any questions, I mean, if you have any problems, like let me know and I'll, I can try and sort it out. Um, so basically how this is going to work, I'll give you a demonstration here. Um, yeah, I'll share this. Right, so um, once you've signed in and val validated yourself, um, you can uh, propose some just some talk some topic that you want to talk about, um, and uh, you can describe you know the, the content. Um, this should be using GitHub flavored Markdown, um, so you can kind of add stuff in there, um, and then basically on a regular basis. So we go to sessions. Um, Everybody will see the list of the, the topics and they can go and read and see what, what, what the topic is supposed to be about. Um, and then everyone expresses how much they want to attend the session. Very much, yes, a little or none. And then we have um, basically a heuristic scheduler that will try to maximize um, happiness. So basically the scheduler will get 100 points for every, it knows you can only be in one place at one time. And so it'll get 100 points for every very, uh, you know, thing that you can attend, 75 points for every yes thing you can attend, 25 point, points for every little thing you can you can attend. Um, and basically, it will try and maximize that number of, of, of kind of points it can get. Um, we will be running the schedule, uh, and then the result will be here on the, the schedule page. So um, we will be running the schedule every, every day after the last talk is finished. Um, so make sure and express your interest um, uh, before then. And then we'll lock the schedule for that day. So you can see right now, these are all labeled tentative, which means that the next time we run the schedule, the schedule may decide to place it somewhere else. Um, similarly, if you see here, like it says tentative um, on the side of the screen. Um, but once it says, uh, once we once we run the schedule like you know that day, we'll lock the slots for that day. And then this will turn green. And then you'll know that basically those will stay exactly where they are. Um, I think that's the main thing, right? So let me stop. Let's so, yeah, stop sharing there. Um, so basically, uh, and talks can be restricted as to which slots they can be scheduled in. So particularly if you have a, a, a talk that is meant to go, uh, sorry, a design session that has is supposed to go after a talk, um, you know, let me know, and I can make sure that to say that well, it has to happen, you know, after this talk. Um, or if there's certain times of the day that you can't make it, um, or if there's a specific slot that you need for some reason, um, just email me, let me know, and I can lock it to that uh, specific time zone. Um, so design sessions, I think, um, I think it'd be ideal if everyone that was actively involved in the discussion, even if you're kind of listening most of the time, um, should turn on the turn on the cameras. Um, we were warned that like having like a hundred cameras on wasn't necessarily going to be optimal. Um, so just kind of as a rule of thumb, maybe try and make not more than 20 cameras on at a time. Um, so uh, yeah, so, so if, if you're a speaker, um, so w w whoever's running the design session will be made the, the presenter. And the presenter has an option, um, well, first of all, to have these tools here where you can sort of draw on the screen um, and do things like that. And um, there's also an option I'm going to turn on right now, just so you can try it out, um, for a shared shared whiteboard. So now all, all of you should be able to see your little cursors on the screen, and you can kind of draw things briefly. Um, go ahead and draw if you want, like there's 75 people drawing. Um, and then I'm going to turn off the shared whiteboard. And then there's a little, so, so, so if when you're the presenter, there's a little, there'll be a toolbar that you can't see at the side of the screen, right? Um, and then there's, uh, you know, a little trash can button that will clear all the annotations. Um, right. Uh, there's a shared notes area. Um, so nominate someone. It's very difficult to actually in, be involved in the discussion and the day comes at the same time. So ideally nominate someone who's not going to be kind of, you know, one of the most active participants in the discussion to take notes. Um, those shared notes should be saved after each session, but it might not be a bad idea for someone to just copy and paste after the session, just to make sure we have a backup. 
Um, and then we'll send out the shared notes to you and you can post, someone should clean them up and then post the results to Zendevel so everyone that couldn't attend the session knows what's going on. Um, go back to this one. Uh, right, social, social, socialization menus. So we're gonna have, we have a hallway track, which is the Fairfax um, kind of virtual room. And what we've done, um, well, actually I'll cover that in, in the next slide. Um, the IRC channel, now th this, is, this is something to know, the IRC channel um, uh, in the email it said it was gonna be on Freenode. That's actually changed recently as of last week, more or less. Um, it's gonna be on OFTC, okay? So, uh, so you can point your, so you, you can go to OFTC.net, the webpage, and they'll have all the information there, or you can point your um, IRC client at OC, uh, IRC to OFTC.net um, 6697. Um, and it did me the Zen Summit hash tag. And I think, uh, yeah, at the moment I only see a hand, handful of people there. Um, so, and there's two meeting rooms. Um, so basically just arrange, if, if you need to have a, a space to, to chat with some people, a small group of people away from kind of everybody else, um, then just choose a meeting room to go to. If there's other people there, go to one of the other rooms. Um, the other thing we're going to do is after the after the scheduled talks each day, um, we're going to have a kind of a pub session in the Fairfax um, room. Um, so in the past, we've always had you know a handful of people, you know, so sort of, you know eight or ten people at various times, um, and there's always been some hangers on. that's kind of has gone on for like you know several hours. So feel free to sort of like maybe go have dinner and go have a break and then come back after half an hour or an hour. There's almost certainly going to be someone there um, for you know in, in, into the evening. Um, I'll be there for a reasonable amount of time, you know, for probably an hour or two, as, as long as there's other people there. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah. So the next thing is the, so socialization during the breaks, there's an optional socialization thing. Okay. So definitely for breaks, just feel free to just disappear and come back half an hour later. Um, if you have zoom fatigue or whatever. If you're up for it, um, one of the things that we did last year that worked really well was we had everyone that was in the hall, basically give people a five minute break or whatever. But then basically, um, after that, if you were in the, if you were in the, the, the hallway track, um, randomly break you into groups of five or six so that you just have a chat with a small group of people. So then instead of having kind of a, you know, room of like 20 people, it's difficult to have a conversation, you know, whatever. But like if you only have a, a you know, um, if you take those 20 people and break them into like, you know, four groups of, of, of five, then the conversations are, are much better. And, um, you're going to meet and chat with people that you, you know, didn't meet before. So, um, yeah. And I think that's it. So are there any questions about the virtual summit itself? If not, um, then, oh, so I, I guess what, one other thing is that, um, so Deb Giles and her staff are, they are monitoring the, the thing for, you know, they're running the whole session, right? So if you have any, you know, weird technical problems or whatever, like you can, I mean, talk to me or talk to Deb. Um, similarly, they have staff that are monitoring um, things for code of conduct violations or whatever. Um, so uh, hopefully things should be fine. Um, but if, uh, if you, if anything happens or comes up, then um, please go ahead and uh, contact you know or myself or Deb or someone from her team, um, and they can sort of they can handle the matter. Um, so, Jeppe, which links in particular did you did you want to look at? Okay, so let's get started with the uh, um, the weather report. So just, you know, um, what's happened this year. Um, we had two Zen releases, Zen 4.14, um, that had Linux subdomains, um, lightweight fork for VM fuzzing, uh, support for the full amount of RAM for Raspberry Pi 4, Hypervisor FS, we had 4.15, which had ARM device model support um, and SMMU v3 support. We had Intel processor trace for improved fuzzing. We had live update. Um, we had unified boot, boot images. We had a lot of really cool stuff um, released uh, this year, as well as things that are kind of in progress. Um, 
Community wise, things are so. I just spent a, a week um, digging through, you know, you know, mailing list stats and, and this kind of stuff, and I think things are looking very healthy for for community our age and our size. So, as expected, um, you know, Zusa and Citrix are kind of contending for top position for a number of emails. So this is a e number of emails sent to the list since the last Zen Summit until like yesterday. <laughs> so, um, as normal, sort of. Citrix and Zusa are kind of contending for the top, top position, um, but together they only make up about half of the, the total emails of the list. Um, there's a big chunk of contributions from Amazon, um, so they have conti continued to do really well about um, coming and contributing to the project. And then, we, of course, we have a long tail of other, you know, um, ARM and Xilinx and EPAM and um, even Red Hat, Microsoft, um, and so on. And we have uh, a fairly big chunk, 70% of, you know, people that aren't really easily slaughtered into some specific category. Um, so we have a lot of just random people that, is, that are coming and contributing to Zen, um, and it's looking really good. Um, the community call um, is continuing to go well. We regularly get over 20 people. Um, sometimes there's only 30 people on that call just to chat about stuff that needs to be chatted about, like so um, to toss ideas out, out there, to get feedback, early feedback on designs, um, to coordinate with, you know, other, with other people to make sure that your patches get unblocked um, and, and so on. So that's gone really well. Um, and that has spun off a number of, number of successful working groups, which we'll, I'll talk about um, kind of one of the future slides. Um, GitLab's CI has continued to expand. Um, earlier this year, we experimented a little bit with um, using uh, GitLab um, merge requests um, in addition to the, the mailing list. And there's still some discussion on that, so that's not kind of sort of out the door. Um, we're experimenting with new ways to to to, to kind of um, uh, to be able to integrate some of this stuff with uh, our, our old workflow with with kind of a lot of the new tools. Um, and of course, the HMI um, hypervisor virtual machine introspection subproject launched earlier this year with great fanfare, and that seems to have been doing um, you know really well. Uh, so the security team, um, we managed to get a number of really long-running issues off of our plate. I mean, a lot of this stuff happens and it's, it's, it's invisible to people who aren't on the security team um, until you sort of get the, you know, the batch of XSAs. But there's a number of really long-running issues that we're just kind of hanging over our heads. Um, there still are quite a few, um, but we managed to actually cross off a number of things off of the list, so that was really good. We have become a CVE numbering authority, so we no longer, now we, we can issue our, we have our own block of, blocks of CVEs that we can just assign to issues. And we don't need to sort of wait for MITRE. We don't have to wait for MITRE to, you know, send us a thing to apply. Um, oh, <laughs> let's just say something. Um, and uh, we have Roger has been added to the security team. Um, so uh, that's been helpful. Uh, I'm the only person in this conference. The. Um, there are lots of really technical things going on. Um, so functional safe, safety certification has been making lots of progress. Uh, we're working really closely with the, the Zephyr project to come up with common standards for how, how things are going to work. Um, and there's going to be, you know, talks on, on that, updates on that later. Um, there have been a number, it's been really interesting to see, like, just from a number of different areas in the community, people saying, hey, we've been thinking about doing stuff on Word.io, right? Um, so the OpenXT community has been doing that. The embedded community has been doing that. Um, Vates and some of the survey community have been doing that. And then out of the blue, I mean, so I didn't realize that Jurgen was working on this, but like, you know, Jurgen is supposed to talk on, on you know, um, Zuzu working on Verdeo. So there's a lot of stuff, you know, people interested in implementing Verdeo um, for Zen. So I excited to see what kind of happens with that. Um, Amazon is working on live update, which is different than live patching. Right, so I'll let them explain the difference between that. But it's it's a kind of a new cool feature that they've been working on internally and are working on upstreaming. Um, the risk five port has been making steady progress, um, and I saw a, a patch series last week that allows actually risk five to actually compile, at least. Um, and there's a number of different people that are kind of in, in parallel working on that. That's really good. Um, Hyper launch, which is basically a generalization of the DOM zero less um, thing, to allow you to much more flexible way of starting VMs at boot. Um, much more work on secure boot um, and secure free Zen, of course, is continuing to, 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 to make progress. Um, lots of really cool things going on. Um, one thing from the community thing, and just um, an update, is um, we're going to start up kind of post jobs. 
Um, and actually a number of, sorry, hello. Okay, I, I got a thing saying your connection has been lost, so, okay. <laughs> I mean, I can, I can still hear you, so go on. Okay, I don't, I don't know why I don't have to be like that, but... Okay, um, so we're going to start. A, we're going to start. We're going to put a jobs page back, right? So I think that, that we don't. Okay, we don't have this alias yet because we're still just kind of talking about it. Um, but the idea would be this: if you have a job that you want to post, um, email jobs at Okay, um, and the job posting must have a link to an external web pipe web page that will have that job posting, right? So LinkedIn or know, whatever website that that has the actual job posting on it. And then what, and then there'll be a jobs coordinator that will take those things, put it on the web page, and once a month, just go through the things, click on the link, um, and remove any kind of stale entries. Um, and that should make sure that the jobs page keeps kind of, um, fresh. Um, so we do, we will need a, um, jobs, a volunteer, um, to be, uh, or a set of volunteers to be the kind of jobs coordinator to do that. So if you were interested in that, please email me, um, community.manager at citrus at, at zenproject.org. Um, and uh, we will get that set up. Um, yeah, so there's a question here about the GitLab um, experiment. So I think basically we should probably, we should probably set up a design session to talk about that. Um, yeah, I, I won't get into it here, um, but there's, it, it's not, anyway, yeah, we, we, we can talk about that at a, at, 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 during the design session. Um, Okay, so the other thing, just as, as an update, um, some of you may know Freenet has had some drama basically last week, came to a head last week. Um, we you know, asked Jackson to look into things. He looked at a number of different options, and what he recommended was we all move to Uf uftc.net. Um, so all the Debian stuff is hosted there. Um, a lot of the QMU stuff is hosted there. Um, uh, a lot of the Linux kernel stuff is hosted there. So a lot of our sister projects are kind of hosted there. It's been an independent thing that had for 15 or 20 years now, quite a long time. Um, and uh, it's, you know, a lot of our sister projects are, are kind of there. Uh, we work closely with Debian, we work closely with QMU. Um, and so um, nothing is kind of, I mean, nothing is official. So no one's objected basically so far on the mailing list. If you have... If you want to sort of object, if you have strong opinions about, you know, not moving to OTC, then feel free to weigh in on the, the mailing list. But um, uh, basically for now, it looks like we're probably going to be moving everything over to OTC.net as soon as that's kind of official. And that's why this sort of, this and some other things have moved there as well. Um, right. And I think I just wanted to end this, um, this thing with a reminder of, of what I think of as, you know, Zen is a really good project. Um, and there's some really good distinctives that I think that are not matched by any other project. Um, and there's, well, there's a lot more things, um, but there's, but this, this, this key thing is that, that, I mean, there's lots of features that features can kind of be sort of duplicated, but like, um, ways of doing things are, are actually quite, you know, quite different. So, um, of course, one of the things is security and that comes up in two different areas. So one is the security response process. Um, so we have a very mature security response process. Um, anyone who, um, has a, anyone who runs a public cloud anyone who has a product with Zen in it, um, as well as anyone who kind of runs a distro, um, can sign up to, to be notified ahead of time of any, you know, security issues. And we're pretty thorough about, you know, what, what, we, what we're considering issues. So a lot of um, things you'd only get, you know, something for like a privilege escalation or whatever, but um, information leaks or even kind of corner case, you know, denial of service attacks, um, you, you'll get notified of this and you can be able to fix it before we sort of go public with it, usually usually about two weeks later. Um, Zen also has a number of defense and depth features. Um, so driver domains, DM domains, and so on. And basically for these two reasons, this is why Cubes OS and OpenXT um, are, you know, are really, you know, fit in with, with using Zen. The other thing that we have is is a it's a it's a it's the microkernel design, right? So Zen itself, which in less than a second, and now we have this kind of you know, DOM zero list gave us the ability to boot not just DOM zero, but a number of other domains immediately, right from, you know, right from the boot. And hyperlaunch will make that even kind of more flexible with, with how it's done. Um, that means that it's much easier to verify. It's possible to do like a safety certification of Zen 
um, and it's sort of easy to modify. So there's a number of, of, of kind of, you know, features like um, the, you know, fast VM fork and, you know, VMI and things like that, which, which, I mean, I haven't, which, which seem to have been easier to implement in Zen, um, and then, then in, 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 in KVM or, or other, other sister projects. So, um, yeah, those, those are things that make Zen sort of really distinctive. And, um, I think we really need to emphasize, I mean, so we, so, uh, you know, yeah, Zen has a lot of really cool distinctive things about it. Um, and we're looking, we're excited to see, um, what things are going to happen in the future with Zen. Uh, so with that, I will once again, thank all of our platinum sponsors. Um, and I will take any questions.